really nice people. Yeah, they are. They are. They are. I mean, um, they're good as both uh, friends and um, mentors Much as well. Right. Yep. Yes. And I mean, it was really good for John to man to have managed to actually go to Israel because it yeah. actually allowed him to um, to expand basically yeah. his understanding of the art and how to yeah. deliver it. Oh, anyway, we're already live. Okay, good evening, everybody. So tonight we have Grandmaster Dieter, and this is going to be his uh, interview with FMA discussion. And um, so good evening, Grandmaster. Good evening. Um, How Tom, are you doing? Nice, nice to be here, and it's an honor to be on the show. Yeah. So did you already manage to get some rest from your holiday? <laughs> Uh, the holiday were a good rest. <laughs> oh, but yes, okay. I, yeah, but after that, <laughs> I hope you yeah, everything's to, fine. All right, okay. I hope you managed to uh, do your class last night. Uh, yes. All right. Cool. Okay. Uh, so before we start, um, good evening, everybody. So once again, if you've got any questions for Grandmaster D third, please don't hesitate to either message me or just put it in the comment box, okay? Yep. All right. I think we're gonna have a very good discussion tonight, okay? Yep. So, okay. okay. All right, so let's start. Uh, so for our viewers tonight, can you kindly recap basically how you started with martial arts in general and then how you uh, got introduced into FMA? and then yeah. everything follows now. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I started martial arts in 1966 uh, when I was um, uh, pretty young and had, there was problems in school. I was very young in third, third grade already. So my parents thought he should do something sort of to be able to stand mm -hmm. off against the others so, so they put me to judo but that was the only only thing that you could do at that in these days right and yeah. later on um when i was uh, turning f 13 14 i started with uh, karate and karate taekwondo mix mixture then kung fu tai chi and, and so on and so forth um and um then um in um 1978 Mm -hmm. I um, started with uh, FMA first uh, on the first seminar that Jackson Kui Broca, a student of uh, uh, Ernesto Prez and Roberto Prez, as he gave in Germany. And he, he was here giving many, many seminars. Um, uh, and in um, 1983, I sort of got so interested in, in that that I uh, decided with, with a friend to um, fly to the Philippines for three months, uh, mm -hmm. just strictly for training purposes. And uh, we trained there um, with uh, many, many, many different um, uh, different arts um, and uh, different masters and grandmasters. Um, and especially, of course, with Grandmaster Ernesto Prezes, but also with Grandmaster Rudel de Gorg or Roland Dantes or uh, Cristina Vasquez, René Tongson, and all, all those grandmasters on the Philippines, also from, from other styles. Yeah. Um, may I just say that seemingly on um, FMA f um, discussion, the, the interview seems not to be live yet because some people don't find it there. Oh, okay. Well, if it's actually easier if, the, if they can go to Dean's uh, Frank. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell. Yes, please. Um, okay, so while you're doing it. So good evening, okay. everybody. Good evening, Jesse. Good evening, uh, Michael and Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel's there. Hi. Yeah, nice friends. Yes, yeah, very good friends. Good <laughs> That's friends. The only thing I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. better if they basically tune into uh, to Dean Franco's. And Julius is okay. here. Hi, Julius. Julius, hi. Yeah, he's one of the moderators. Yes. Yeah, Emmanuel. I, I know Emmanuel since also mid of the '90s when he when he was the first time here with uh, Mike Yasuro, Mike and I, and uh, teaching there. So so it's also 25 years oh, wow. uh, history of us together. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Nice. Long friendship in FMA brotherhood. Many. I've got many long, long, <laughs> long term friendships. Yes. Yeah, I think that's the, one of the good things about FMA, especially when you've yes. been doing it all throughout the years. You basically yes. generate like uh another set of family another yes. set of friends another set of siblings 
Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and you got Alexander. Oh, Alexander. Yes, he's from our association. He's board member of our association. All right. That's good. Okay. So you were uh, saying earlier on, you were uh, telling us regarding your um, uh, intro to FMA, how you were basically um, introduced to FMA. Well, yes, at that time, um, uh, I was, when it started, about 17, 18 years, and I was already black belt and, uh, in different different arts, and we had uh, long seminars uh, in autumn and in, sp in, aut in spring, Easter. They were going for a week, um, and um, uh, we did 10 hours of training a day, and we started with Kung Fu, and then we did Tai Chi, and then Jiu Jitsu, and then Karate, and then Bo Jutsu, and, and Jackson Kui Broca uh, was there, invited there too, and he taught uh, Arnis and Full Contact Karate, and so I joined there as well. Um, and, you know, um, finding it interesting, uh, seeing that I could, you know, I was getting pretty good uh, pretty fast, and I started teaching rather early because I was interested to, sh to share the art. Yeah. Um, um, so that, that got me involved, um, uh, and um, I was got pretty, and it was really, there hardly were any F FMA at around that time, that was end of the 70s. Um, so I got regional uh, instructor, chief instructor for, for our area, and you know, so, so it, it, um, it, it went from there. Uh, mm -hmm. Later on, I found out after 10 years of doing FMA, I, I found out that my last name in old German means actually the man with the stick. And that yes. was... Uh, that's destiny. <laughs> that's, yes, sort of, sort of, yes. Uh, so it was um, already in the genes and your family name. Sort of, sort of, yeah. And, and the, the coat of arms of our family, uh, we don't have one, but uh, other, other parts of our family uh, had one. Every coat of arms has a stick or a club in there. Uh, yeah. So, so that it is, it is some kind of, it is strange. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I feel at home here. I feel at yes, home in are. Filipino. And I think uh, one of the title that was bestowed to you also is very fitting in your in in your um, in your honor, basically, like your that your uh, the title of Adatu. Yes, Datu is chief chief ten in the Philippines. We see we see it. Um, I know that the title of Datu has a has a significant uh, role and value in the Filipino society. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm far away from believing that I'm a Datu of the Filipino society. Mm -hmm. But the way the Filipino society works, we put that into the the, the Arnis. So the um so you've got the the um the sultan on the top and you had remy praises on the top yes. and the sultan uh, made the tattoos and remy made the tattoos so i'm the tattoo of modern artists not of filipino culture yes right? i know, I know. So, so so um um i do not want to offend uh, any any filipino uh, from the south but on the other hand i did not give this title myself uh, and uh, remy bestowed it on on us on the western people like kelly warden who fought many fights because he was had problems being accepted as the first Datu, as white uh, Datu Puti, you know, the white white Datu. Datu um, <laughs> Puti, yes. Yes, <laughs> so bom, bom, bom. And, um, <laughs> yes. I know, there, there are brands that are like that, yeah. Um, so, so um, yes, I'm, I'm quite proud to wear it. And, and my, on my ninth, ninth degree uh, certificate, it says that I'm, an, that I'm an honorary Filipino. I'm a friend of the Filipino wow. people, and I love that. Well, of course. <laughs> yes, That's that was very idea. nice. Such an honor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So, all right. Let Let's backtrack a little bit. Um. So you started with uh, Kui Broca. Yes. So that was uh way back seventies, isn't it? Seventy eight, seventy nine, uh, up to um, eighty two, eighty three. He died in eighty four. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. And so what and in seventy. What caught your attention what? with Filipino martial arts when you saw him like? maybe doing the seminars. I just liked it. And, and, and it just felt, I felt, it felt right for me doing that. Um, and uh, as I said, I've, I've already been in martial arts there for oh, 76, 12, 13 years. Yeah. Um, so, so um, yeah, I was interested in all kinds of martial arts, but that in special, because that, that was the only country that I went to uh, then for, for, for three months to train there. Mm -hmm. And after I came back, um, I, uh, and I taught different arts before, I decided consciously to stop practicing and teaching all other martial arts and just concentrate focusing on the FMA. 
and that was in 1983 already, right? Wow. So that's some 37 years ago when I said, okay, modern harness is going to be my path, if I may. Okay. So when you get to the Philippines, you trained with uh, Ernesto Presas, yes. Roberto Presas, uh, and some of the other grandmasters in modern Arnis. Christino Vasquez, Rene Tongson, Rodel Dago Org, uh, Roland Dantes, uh, um, Bambi Tulai, um, um, Pepito Rovas at that time. Um, um, you know, you name it, uh, all, the, all the Filipino, all the, the people that are now Filipino, uh, the modern artists, grandmasters, grandmasters, you know, they were there and I trained with them over months. And, okay. and I trained three, four, five, six hours a day, you know, so oh. because we were there for training, we were not there for holiday. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that didn't mean that we didn't do some some trips to Bohol, to Bicol or, 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 or uh, Boracay or so, but only always a few days and then come back and continue. Come our back training. for training. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, what were your basically like, I would say, strongest memories or fondest memories when you were training in the Philippines with all the uh, modern Arnis grandmasters or, yeah? Um that they were extremely friendly, that they were very hospitable, um, um, that um, they embraced people that like their art, that come to the Philippines to train their art. So it wasn't, oh, this foreigner, let's see if he can fight or if he's any good or something like that. It was rather opposite. Oh, you want to do harness here? Come here and we train and then I show you. And <clears throat> and uh, this, this kind of uh, quite contrary to the... Japanese arts where you go yeah. speak online, you know, oh, yeah. and also the, the training style is, is more relaxed uh, so that you go indiv train individual and uh, and it's not such a itch ni you know, this, this, <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been there. Know, I've been there. I don't, I don't put, want to put it down. It's, it's a different way of training, right? Um, yeah. But I, I, for me, it, it fits and, and that, that was really, really nice and uh, I got to train with many, many different people and um, and that was very enjoyable. Uh, it hurt at times, <laughs> painful, <laughs> uh, but good pain, right? Because uh, pain, pain shows yes, uh, how, how a technique works and what to do and where to go, right? So yeah, you're good. Yeah. So one of the questions from the from the audience here is, when did you get uh, first to get to train with Professor Remy? Yes. Um, we trained with Ernesto from 83 till 90, end of 93. And then uh, we split the, the, the working together with him or he was like working together as well. There were uh, issues. Mm -hmm. um, and in January um, 1994, he was invited to Germany, not by us, by another group. Um, um, Gabi Roloff to, to tell the name. Uh, and uh, that was just a coincidence that he was just there after we split with his brother. And so we, we went there um, to, um, to the seminar. And uh, um, the funny thing was really that um, Remy didn't push uniforms at that time in, the, in, in America. So people came in their karate, in their um, Taekwondo Kempo uniform or whatever, or even without, just singlet and, and pants. Um, so um, uh, when we came there, we were about 25 of my black belts attending mm -hmm. with the uniform that Remy, Grandmaster Remy designed. Red pants oh, as right. a, with a two red stripe, two black stripes with a, with a white t-shirt um, as a reference to the Katipunan, you know, yes, who had the yes. red pants and the yes. white white yes. uh, white uh, blouse or yeah. a shirt. Yeah. Um, and with a with a black uh, belt rimmed in red. So so we we 25 people wore his uniform and he didn't know us. Uh, so um, and I, I'm, I know that he liked that. He, he enjoyed that. And uh, so that's when when we um, discussed the whole situation mm -hmm. and that we would like to. Uh, um, join him and he said that he would 100% support us and uh, um, which he did um, and we invited him and had seminars and um, I went to the States and go to camps there and but that was in, in beginning of 84. Okay. Sorry, beginning of 1994, not 84, 94. 1994. Yes. Okay. I was, yeah, yeah. In, in 83 or 84, 
four, um, I got already fifth uh, done or fifth degree black belt from uh, Ernesto Prezas and um, Rodel de Gork and uh, Roland Dantes. Um, and uh, first Remy, Grandmaster Remy, after seeing me and my group, a year later he confirmed that and a year later then I, I got uh, the Lacan Anim sixth degree and uh, okay. also the Dato title. Okay, oh, that's good. Right. Yeah. Um, second, it, this is a follow-up question from the same person. What was the biggest difference you noticed between training with uh, Professor Remy and Professor Ernesto? On a style level, mm -hmm. I would I would say that Ernesto's system. I mean, it later turned to combatant, but when I trained, it was modern anis. And what I've learned was 90% of the things that were in the pink book, and the pink book was the reference book for the for the modern anis in the Philippines from Grandmaster Remy at the time. Anyway, um, but um, Ernesto added some things, and I would say Ernesto's system was broad, mm -hmm. meaning he went also into Bo Staff or into Tonfa or Sai or, or this and this and this and this. And okay. Remy's system was deep. All right. Remy didn't, didn't touch so many subsystems, but okay. the steel stick or the empty hands uh, or, or, or this kind of stuff, he went miles deep. All right. Right? Um, as, and he focused on that and on self-defense and Ernesto's was, was broad. So also Ernesto's um, system was m a lot based on striking, blocking, combinations, footwork, moving mm -hmm. around. Um, whereas Grandmaster Remy, which probably was his way in the 70s also, but yeah. when he moved, when he d continued the modern artist in the US, um, he had many, many influences. So there was the small circle jujutsu from uh, from uh, Grand uh, Professor Wally J that like, uh, yes. he incorporated. So so uh, there was with Grandmaster Remy, there was much more trapping, empty hands, uh, locking, uh, stick locks, stick traps, finger locks, um, uh, lock flows. Um, uh, um, flow sparring or tapi tapi or single cane sparring, whatever it was called. Later from 95 on, it was called tapi tapi. Um, but it had different names before. Okay. Um, um, and that again uh, got much, 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 much deeper. Uh, whereas we, he never touched uh, the tonfar or the sai or whatever, right? Uh, I'm sure he could could uh, could deal with that, but it wasn't in his focus. Oh, or he yeah. could you know, deal his wrong way, but he, he would be would be good at it. But okay. um, it was, just wasn't his, his thing. He concentrated more on the empty hands and the stick, and you know that was yours. Ah, really okay. good. Or, or the blade, long blade, and so. Yeah, yeah. actually, I've got a uh, a question about that. You, you, uh, uh, the palm stick or the dulu dulu yes. was developed by or popularized by modern Chinese, was it? Was it? Oh, well, I. <laughs> So I started training with the with the palm stick with the doodle doodle in '93 already. That was okay. That, that right. was down there. I have no idea if other systems, like be it in the states or in the Philippines, if they would have been training with the with the I, palm stick for decades or or, or centuries no, before. I just no, don't it, have it. it not. It was popularized by, by modern Chinese back in the 70s. Okay. I know that the name of Dulu Dulu is mainly used in the in yeah. the modern Chinese. And yeah. uh, yeah. uh, Daniel cool. Santo um, uh, uses tab um, um, Tabak Malit was the was the nunchaks. Um, tabak Sayo. Ta yeah. What? Yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, uh, it is like as a, I don't know, as a package uh, si system. As, so it was, I was about to ask. From which brother did it come from? But yeah, yeah. I would. Well, but it's it's just an, an adaption uh, uh, from, from the I stick. Know. I mean, I it's not that it's an own system. But if you yeah. understand how the stick works, how the empty yeah. hand works, then a palm stick is just a natural yeah. natural tool. Yeah, and because both <coughs> brothers have a Japanese arts background, it it basically you've got the yawara from yawara. Yeah, the yawara. Yes. So yes. yeah. So, yeah, or later, the Kubotan, right? Yeah, the Kubotan, yes, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it was just interesting. I mean, as, yeah. as I've said, as, as like a package type of uh, practice. But, okay, uh, before we move on, uh, let's, again, let's say hi to a few people who had just signed in. So, you got Alexander, you got Matthias, uh, Marcus, I think this is uh, your your guys, Basti Wills. Yes. Uh, yeah, 
and um yeah before i carry on with some of my with, with my questions uh michael ask michael kalalang asked a question here why do you believe more foreigners enjoy fma than the filipino people it's i think it's a world phenomenon mm -hmm. um look i as a german do filipino martial arts i don't do a german martial art <laughs> yeah. right in england they do filipino martial arts and they yes. don't the, well, well of course there might be people who do it so mm. the filipinos are like many others attracted by the foreign things mm. yeah right yeah. so as i as am i right so i'm attracted to the filipino art which is a foreign art to me right mm. um and um it's perhaps hard in the beginning for the filipinos to understand that they have an excellent art that the, the art is as good as not if not better i mean better in boys and arts it doesn't matter it, it's 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 as good as any other art in the world has mm. its big advantages and um compared to other arts like they have advantages to to artists but it can it holds its ground um and usually it's it's perhaps that people say hey, it's only filipino and let's let's do something international right so so i can imagine that uh, that's uh, that's uh, i mean the the most popular sports in the philippines is what basketball isn't it yes it is basketball the most popular uh, martial art is karate i think right yep still karate yeah yeah, you, you yeah. have like so, karate, taekwondo, judo, yeah. mostly but, competitive. So, so it's the foreign sports. things that that you get attracted to, and uh, and I think that's uh, all over the world the same. <laughs> but but um, the 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 Filipino masters and the grandmasters in the in the last 10, 15 years, I think, did a very good job in creating awareness for the Filipino martial arts in the Philippines. Yeah, uh, Senator yes. Sibiri, you know the bill uh, that Arnis is compulsory in the um, uh, in in the schools and universities, and that has been, been taught there, and um, they're pushing it very much forward. Um, uh, and it's you see it in many many films now. You know Matt Damon mm -hmm. uh, is, is doing Filipino martial arts in uh, in his Born uh, trilogy, yeah. and 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 you know you find it in so so many uh, Hollywood movies. Yeah, um, that uh, there, I think this is also helps the growing appreciation of the Filipino martial, martial art by the Filipino people in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, coming from from the Philippines myself, growing up during the seventies and the eighties, yes, karate became really popular, uh, yes. especially amongst kids. And because yes. you've got a competitive side to it, it makes it easier to to uh, market it. Where yes. in Filipino martial arts, because it deals with weapon so it, it has that kind of uh, high risk or danger in its practice and especially if you got parents who amongst parents will basically send their kids to learning something to 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 to, to uh what's this oh, we train with weapons you know yeah, exactly. <laughs> let, let, let the kids train with weapons yeah so even yes. even my even my parents back then i was like I was I was asking them for me to learn martial arts, so it's it was a bargaining thing, like okay, you you can do this, you can learn this, but not this, <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> because this is too violent, so yeah. something like that. So yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, back in the seventies and eighties, you've got like karate, yeah. um, taekwondo, and judo, and plus of course you got the movies back then. It's all yeah. based from those uh, from those arts and even ninjutsu. Yeah. But yeah, 90s, starting 90s, it became uh, like uh, they managed to teach FMA like in schools now, especially yeah. in the high school yeah. uh, and also in college, actually. So, yeah, yeah so it, it, it has changed. It has changed. But yeah, like you said, I mean, we have a lot of foreigners coming to the Philippines to learn Filipino martial arts. And yeah, in the movies, it has been used now, yeah. although sometimes you end up posing with a Japanese pose or a Chinese pose, but some the fight scenes itself are Filipino martial arts. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I believe that I was one of the first foreigners to come to the Philippines to especially to train uh, train yeah. uh, Arnis. Um, I'm, nobody can claim to be the first and I would never do that. But um, it was definitely not in the night 1983, it was not the thing to go to the Philippines to train there. <laughs> mm, mm. By the way, I saw a question of Mark, uh, Master Mark Lynn from Texas. All right. Um, okay. 
Um, if I saw uh, um, Ernesto train, teach uh, Japanese uh, things uh, like like uh, the Kobudu weapons in, in, in the Philippines. Well, bef um, he, beside the Modern Artists Association, um, uh, uh, Ernesto Prezes had the Arjuken, or the, it was yeah, actually Arjuken. the Arjuken, uh, uh, Arnis Judo Karate Kendo yes. Association yes. of the Philippines. Yes. So he did karate there, he did kendo there. Um, uh, I didn't see him doing much size or tonfa, but I did see Sai at, at uh, sometimes. Um, but uh, um, Boken or or Shinai, uh, they 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 did I, as, they did. as the, the kendo, they you did. know, very they much. Um, um, and of course, yes, I saw them also doing the karate class. He had karate class, and then he had honest classes. Yes, I saw yeah, them they uh, do, doing yeah. that in the in the old. Uh, um, Jim on um, 7, 744 Quezon Boulevard in Quiapo. <laughs> in Quiapo, yes. First floor, second floor was the yes, Yao Yang. Yes, I've been I've been to their gym actually, and I've seen like uh, the 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 dojo itself and the passbook. Yeah. So yeah, they do have like uh, when whenever you basically sign up sign up in their gym, you have to at one point learn all all the weapons yeah. and be yeah. graded at yeah. one point with the weapons as well. So yeah, they do. They have a very extensive range of the weapon yeah. system as well. That's that's what I mean with broad, right? Yes. So, yes. so so you know very many things, and of course, if you do so many things, because you can only train a certain time, exactly. that means that you can't dig so deep in every every of these uh, yeah. subsystems. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's just it's not an accusal. It's just you know, it just doesn't work that way. If you concentrate yeah. on one yeah. thing, on two things, you can go deeper. If you yeah, concentrate you on ten things, yes. you know. Yeah. 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 That's why every decathlon um, uh, athlete is an excellent athlete, but every specialized athlete is in his art better than the dec decathlon yeah, athlete yeah. because he just spends more time in specializing. Yeah. It's just yeah. normal. Yeah, and I mean, like I used to, I used to compete in triathlon. I I know my strength and I know basically my weakness amongst the three. So like cycling is my weakness. So I okay. try. To, I tend to train more in the running and the swimming part. And okay. swimming part is basically my my strength so mm -hmm. yeah so when i when i play them i sacrifice the cycling part i i basically <laughs> try to do my best in the swimming in this yeah. so it's, yeah it's it's yeah it's yeah but yeah I've, yeah I've i've seen their gym and it's really interesting to see when i saw their passbook so, yeah. did you did you see the old gym or the new gym the old one okay in the 80s Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that 80s. was the one where i was training yeah yeah back and in the 80s. opposite side was the mat matkop gym matkop yeah yeah. Yes, fourth floor of the building. That's where I slept for three, four weeks on the mats. Oh, really? Training, training in the morning, mat cup in the afternoon with the Nestos. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> there, oh, there, yeah. there, I trained with uh, with uh, Rodel Dagog in there and um, um, Freddy Alfaro and um, Antonio Plotria. Okay. Yeah, some of those people. Yeah, because uh, I was basically. Uh, studying Aikido back then. So you basically okay. have like the Aikido Dojo, you've got the Yaoyan Dojo, you've got the Arjuken and the Matkop. <laughs> yeah, very Matkop. close together. Yes, yeah, very yes, close yes. together. So yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we've got- Yeah, the, let uh, me just say hi to Marx, hi to yes. Chad, and hi to Howard. Uh, nice and to Shamim. see you. Like to see you in person again sometimes. <laughs> Long <laughs> time ago. Shamim as well, Shamim. Shamim Hake. He's uh, the- okay. Uh, Ki rep. Okay, UK. I only see a very small part of the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. yeah, I was about to say yeah. They're 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 saying hi. <laughs> okay, nice. so um, let's get into. So you started training, uh, all right, training with Remy as well, and you started getting to your dance. Um, let's. So you uh, let's recap. You got you you've got your six done with uh, GM Remy. Yes. Seventh, uh, with. I got I got seventh, eighth, and ninth when I was in the Philippines. Always from um, um, a council of uh, modern artists, grand masters, and grandmasters in the Philippines, which consists out of uh, uh, Roberto Pre uh, um, Rene Tongson, Cristino Vasquez, um, uh, Bambi Dulai, Rodel da Goog, uh, Vic Sanchez. Um, um, Sorry if I miss one, but Roberto. <laughs> That's course, right. So, so from from those two over the years, because every two years I went to the Philippines to train, and we had a camp there. Um, so I, I got seventh, eighth, ninth over over the decades. 
Um, and in 2016, I think I got 10th uh, from Grandmaster Roberto um, as one of the five people who got it at that time, which was Rene Tongson, um, Bambi Tulai, uh, um, uh, Rodel Da Gook, and uh, da, 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 was, I, uh, yeah, um, Jerry De La Cruz and myself. So I was the only, only foreigner there, which was a big honor. Such an honor. Yes, a big yes. honor, big honor. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's actually interesting, basically, how you got your, um, basically your dance now, your your levels, because it it was already carried by the association itself. So it wasn't carried out just by one person. No, so, no. Yeah. It's actually by every modern artist, master, grandmaster that came from the Philippines and of course of Remy. Mm -hmm. um, so very, I, I got let's uh, fifth from, from Ernesto, uh, fourth and fifth from Ernesto, the, the lower ones from from Cui Broca, but that was from, from Ernesto and then six from Grandmaster Remy and the other from seven, eight, nine from the Filipino Grandmaster and 10 from Roberto Perez. So actually from all that's, of them. That's, yeah, just really nice because at least you've got that, um, you know that basically every Grandmaster in 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 modern Arnis also like recognizes, recognize you your skills yeah. and your talents and your time, your loyalty to modern Ines. Okay, uh, Julius has a question. How does your range and game differ from Filipinos? What, you mean my size? Your range, I'm tall? Your range when you fight. And um, like, yeah, because you're, you're tall. <laughs> yes, when I- when, You've got longer when I, range. When I, when I go to Quiapo, <laughs> and the Kiapo is full. I can see very, very far. <laughs> I know, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, well, of course, it helps in Lago when when you find a Lago, um, Lago range. But let's uh, in, in the end, it's a matter of timing that you go in and out at the right time. But in modern Arnis, we try to move in to to close the angle, to close yes. the gap, move in trap, and then move in in short range. In short range. Uh, Arm length or so doesn't really does is, is not really so important. So I never felt that uh, that you need to be large, tall, strong, and uh, to mm -hmm. be able to, to to become good in Arnis. Um, and um, <clears throat> my and uh, my focus was never a lot of competition. When I when I was young, uh, so let's say up till 22, 23 or so, uh, we did competition also in Germany. But I I never focused too much on it because I was always. Um, I had more interested in teaching, and that's why I studied sports science. So I'm, I've, I've got a Master of Arts in sports science in, uh, in the German Sports Academy in Cologne, Sports University. Um, so that was that was sort of my 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 destiny or more yes. my interest in, in teaching. Yeah, your interest in teaching. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that. Yeah, because I I want okay. to like focus on that a little bit uh, okay. later. We just have a few questions. So, sure. did, from Mark. Did Ernesto integrate the Japanese weapons or keep everything separate, as in total separate arts? Since the past book, yeah, since the past book was mentioned, I never heard. Well, of it. he 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 didn't do lots of let's say sai, but if he applied, or actually also Kui Broca, who was a student of Ernesto and 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 uh, and Roberto and Cristino, um, we did Arnis techniques with sais. So, so it was not that, uh, and of, of course you did your basics, your blocking and, mm -hmm. and, your, and, and your strike and bring it out and block in and go. We did all, also that, but we also did move into the disarming techniques in, into controls there. Um, so it, it's, um, the basics were more in the, done in the Japanese uh, system, but the applications were, were just Arnis with, with other tools than, than, a, than a stick. Okay. Okay. All right. That's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, because when I saw that passbook, I wasn't sure how. Okay, how would this? How would they grade it? Because it also comes with every every weapon uh, in the passbook also comes in in different yes. like levels. Yes, well. yes, um, but uh, I focus. I, I didn't really have much interest in for for the Kubudo weapon, so I focused on actually long staff. I did uh, quite a lot of long staff bow uh, with Ernesto, um, and also, and uh, any everything that has to do with Arnis. And so I I took the Kubudo weapons as a part of the Arnis, but I wasn't really interested in, in getting a uh, um, getting a, a Sai degree or something like that. Yeah. actually, I did get a Nunchaku degree, but uh, oh, did you? Ah, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah, but in Germany they are illegal, so so you're not allowed to own them. So no yeah. good anyway. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, over here, it's also illegal. A lot of things are illegal. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, Chad has a question. Remy yes. taught us differently at times eras. Did you notice this during your times of training? Well, I mean, we only had six years with Remy because we started in 94 and he died in 2001. And actually he was sick in 2000, so, so it was only six years. Um, so I cannot see a lot of change that he did in that time. He did uh, he did start in the in mid of the 90s with a, what we know now as Tappy Tappy with the conceptual Tappy Tappy right hand, left hand, uh, and also double sticks and so on. So, um, and he he already was very deeply in 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 the stick locks, empty hand locks, controlling techniques there and, and self defense there. Um, and I know that in the eighties he uh, he are he was quite different uh, and he he changed something from the eighties to the nineties. But probably I was a little too late um, to see him change there. But I the, this the older stuff I got from his Filipino students, okay. right? Because they, when I see the old books from him, right, this is what I've learned in the Philippines from from his teacher, his students, like like Grandmas Rodel da Gorg. Um, he never trained, for example, with uh, with Ernesto Presas. He was always a student of Grandmas Remy and, and and continued from there when Grandmas Remy left. So, and I trained had intensive training also in ninety three uh, in eighty three when I was, I was in the Philippines from Grandmas Rodel da Gorg. Um, so um, so there was a lot. Um, of, of these basics and these of these ways, and that definitely was much different to to how Ramos Rami taught um, uh, in the nineties. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's interesting to know. Uh, okay, I got three views: eighty-six to ninety, ninety to ninety-two, ninety-five to two hundred. Thank you. 2000, that's uh, okay. 2000 or maybe 2000. Well, 2001. Okay, great, great, great chat. I, I envy everybody for the years that they had with Remy before I, I met him. You know, it's uh, just, you, you, you cannot change history, right? It yeah. was that way. And mm. I wished we would have met up with him 10 years earlier, but we didn't. Mm. Yeah. Right? So, so, so um, what can I say, right? It's, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm happy for everybody who would, who would train with Professor um, for 20 years. Great. Mm. You yeah, know? yeah, great. We we have our own journey. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 it's it doesn't help if you if you in the in afterwards try to change what the history was. Yes, it'll it backfire. Doesn't help. It doesn't help. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Julius has another question. Do you practice any he hema hema or to what be is specific? What uh, is that? Historical European martial arts. No, no. Okay. Never so, did. There you never go. Did. I know people that do, uh, but I never did. Uh, I was asked to fill in for GM Remy Presses in 2000 when he was ill for Leon J's joint seminar, but I was unable as I was in the yeah. Philippines. Yeah. Okay. I think I think um, when I'm, I'm right, uh, Jeff Delaney took over. Uh, uh, that that spot. If I'm, I'm in, I think it was in London. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not hundred percent sure, but but I th I think it was Jeff Delaney who did. Uh, who oh, filled, filled the job then. All right. Okay. That's good. Okay. But I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chad. Chad said I value the time I had with Remy. It's priceless. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And Remy had a way that. Whenever you were with him or he was with you, he gave you the impression you are the absolute most important person he knows. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely that he is, made that, that really with important. everybody. Yeah. But that made everybody think he's the most important person to Remy. <laughs> Why not? I mean Yes, but but he was good with that and he could deal with a good Yeah, he was good with people. Yes. Yeah. Embracing yeah. them. Yeah. Embracing yeah. Them. Yeah. 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 And I bet during that time he'll be able to like uh, see you, tell you what your strengths and your weaknesses are, what the, what are the things that you need to work on, what are basically the things that you're good at. Yeah, not only that, he taught people differently according to their interests and to their, to their knowledge. 
right? Like like Dan Anderson, as far as I know, got taught differently because he had a more karate background mm -hmm. than Bram Frank, who was very much interested in in the knife, uh, mm -hmm. or or uh, Kelly Warden, who was you know in in, in the fighting and uh, uh, um, and uh, more than conceptual part of how how things are structured. I mean. The, don't bet on that. I mean, go to the people and ask them themselves. You know, this is just the connection that I uh, I have here. So, yeah. so um, if if Remy was teaching in in a kung fu school, he probably would teach different things than in a karate mm. school or um, in uh, in a judo school or something like that. Yeah, so that, he, he was adept with any any kind of that these things. So that may also be the reason why pe different people have different aspects of his art. Not only because they trained in different areas. Like they started perhaps in the 80s or in the 70s or in the 90s, which definitely changed what they've learned from him. But mm -hmm. depending also in which setting, in which yeah. school or from which yeah. from where they came, so he adapted to that. Yeah, and that I made think. people very much um, feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, also, his concept, uh, the art within your art. Um, I think it has plus and minus. It has advantages and big disadvantages. The advantage is that. <laughs> high-level instructors were not afraid pe to send people to Remy because they didn't have the feeling Remy want to steal the people that he do with yes. their art. But he says, I enhance your people that they can do your art yeah. even better. So that's how we embraced different groups. The, the disadvantage that I see is there is that it's much, much harder to establish modern artists as a standalone art or mm -hmm. as, as an art that stands it's tall against compared to all other martial arts, yeah. and that's what we try in Germany. That we that we don't see Arnis uh, as an add up to anything else, which yeah. can be done, of course. But we mm -hmm. see Arnis can be a standalone art, and yeah. um, and that's how we try to to, yeah. to teach it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, e even from my from my opinion, uh, having a teacher who can adapt to the group to the person he's teaching is basically a a, a trait uh, a, a trait of a, a very good instructor because yeah. you can and also managing to see your your students potential individually yeah, yeah absolutely okay uh, short hi jim brian nice yep. that you're here thanks for oh, joining yeah. me <laughs> yeah yeah and then another question from mark when you had remy over to germany and worked with him yes. how did you then take his techniques back to your students what process did you use Well, through my studies in university of study of sports, um, I think I have a good ability of analyzing techniques. Um, and um, I was always good in structuring. So uh, we, I saw the things that we were good in. We were good in blocking, striking, uh, disarming, and we were th not so good in the locking and the takedowns and, and the finger locks and the chaining and, and, and the lock flows and so on and so forth. So we tried to... Um, to see uh, the things that Grandmaster Remy showed us on the seminars uh, and focus on those things that we think uh, we we were not so good in, which uh, as he had moved to these locking things in the in the nineties anyway, or mm -hmm. sort of almost everything that he talked right, <laughs> uh, adapting to uh, the the, um, the the tapi tapi of course because before we did the freestyle uh, freestyle sparring of Ernesto Perez, which was a little had the same base but it's in in details much different. Um, uh, so um, um, yeah, I uh, we we try to to soak it up like a sponge. What people, yeah. what, what we taught, um, and you, you know, in in Germany, we had. Uh, I started when once when, when I made my first black belt in I think eighty one. Um, I, I at that time the examination was show me what you've done, what you know, and you showed everything you know, and then you got your degree. Um, and then I sat down and say, okay, let's let me write down everything that that I can think of that I've learned in in in, in and yeah. Then I tried to put it. Um, what would make sense to learn in the beginning? What would make sense? What is more big, basic? What is more advanced? What builds up on the other? So that that was also sort of a basic curriculum, and from there on, um, we uh, we continued to to expand, and um, we had three or four big big um, changes of the programs, um, and one was in eighty in ninety six when we had had the program that we had up to now 
very much of Remy Fraser's uh, techniques adapt put into uh, into the program. Mm -hmm. um, and for you might know that my my main job is uh, also to produce martial arts instructional videos. So of course I, I also did the um, examination program videos. So we did new videos of the of that program. And then in 2002, after Remy has died, we again changed the program to adapt even more things from from Grandmaster Remy into the program. But um, since about 20 years, we've got what we call a technical commission. I'm head of that, but that's mm -hmm. uh, sort of the eight highest, uh, mo most competent uh, modern artists, uh, teachers, masters, grandmasters here in Germany. Um, four are, are um, chosen by the board and four are elected. Um, oh. No, four, four are in because of the high, they are the highest rank. Two are chosen by the board and two are chosen by the members. So every three years, the, the, uh, it, it changes. So, and then we, then we have really people that have been training artists like me for 35, 40 years. Um, and we together see, look in our program, we see the results of our examinations. We see, okay, the students are not so good in this in this, on this area. Uh, what uh, would make sense to improve this on this area um, to make them better? So how can, what do we have to change to make them better in boxing or in lockings? Mm -hmm. And so and that's when then we incorporated techniques in our program where we think, okay, people should, do this or that, um, get better in this and that. And of course, Remy filled lots of gaps. And especially, he opened he opened our mind um, to adapt what's useful and to to make it our own, and, and not to just copy, but you know, do things what we do and 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 make it our own. And yeah. if you see our top people um, in in DRV, um, you will see everybody moves a little different. We have, this, I always say, we've got the same skeleton, yeah. but uh, different muscles. Exactly. Right? So exactly. the taste is, is different. One is more in the classical, one is more the uh, close yeah. range, one's fighting, one is more locking, and that's okay. To yeah. you have to have a good foundation, and then yeah. you just explore different uh, different uh, exactly. parts and different uh, areas of the art. That's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. I do. I, I do. Don't really try, I, well. Yeah. I don't try to when I teach uh, to make carbon copies of myself or be a carbon copy. Um, that was already in the in the nineties, in the eighties, when when I realized. Um, 85, rough, five ish or something like that. That if I try to be a carbon copy of Ernesto Preza, so of any of the teachers, I will always be a copy. So yes. I have to be authentic to myself. Exactly. And I can be authentic to my students. Exactly. Um, and, and, and they don't only see me as, okay, he's trying to mimic um, this or this move, you know? Yeah. So I try to analyze move to, to go in the biomechanics. Why does the, how does the body work? How does the muscle work? And yes. to, to apply the functionality of biomechanics to, to our knees. Exactly. Um, and, um, and, and that's my way of doing it. And yeah. Did other masters do that? Maybe Ramas and Esso and Ramas Remy didn't do that uh, in, in that, that regard. But, you know, I am who I am and I have to try to be myself yes. uh, to, 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 to do that because uh, uh, you can't, you can't yeah. mimic somebody your whole, your, your, all, all your life. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's a very good point, actually, that you raised because, I mean, you've got different body structure. I mean, yes. even, 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 even like... Um, when I came over to the UK, I have to change some of my methodologies and teaching because it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't basically, um, it, otherwise I won't be able to adapt to my students over here. Yes, so, and the, yeah. the, the, the mindset of the people in the West is different than the, in the East. Exactly. Right, and if yeah. you want to be successful, you sort of don't, you have to, don't have to sell out your art saying, okay, you want to do grappling? We do grappling. You want to do hiking? Yes, we do high kicking. You know, you want to hit with swords on your helmet? We do that. No, no. But mm -hmm. um, you have to know what people appreciate when they teach and when, when yes. they learn and, uh, and so on and uh, to, to be successful. You know? yeah. So That's I know true. that our system is pretty successful in Germany, um, but maybe it doesn't work in Czech Republic. People, I mean, the mentality is different, or in Denmark, yep. or in, Swe in, in uh, Switzerland, or in in, uh, yeah. uh, in France, or so, right? So, yeah. so they have, all have a little different mentality, and you have to see what works in that country. Right? Exactly, exactly. When I just have uh, Brian Zavolinsky asked what was the big, uh, biggest difference between oh, okay. uh, Remy and Ernesto, we covered that, Brian. But just in a nutshell, uh, two things. Rem Ernesto concentrated much more on the blocking, on the striking, on the movement. That's what we would call more classical, the classical strikes and, uh, you know, go with the force, force to force and, you know, combi stri striking combinations. Remy 
when when I was with him more into into the locking application and and takedowns, uh, finger locks and uh, and lock flows. And second, that Remy goes very deep in a few areas, and Ernesto got, got very broad in many areas. So that's just in a nutshell. Uh, if you see the interview uh, later on in the beginning, we uh, I talked yeah. a little bit more about that. But yeah. that's sort of in a nutshell. About yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's see. Right. Um, so yeah, we, like we were talking earlier on, it's it's really good. It's it's really important that you manage to understand what you're teaching, what you're doing from from the uh, biomechanics standpoint or from the science. Yes. It's it's really important because otherwise, if you don't back it with science, you don't back it with good biomechanics, it becomes. Your teaching becomes well. Well, just to say something, if you would do your, the calisthenics the way that your teacher and teacher teachers do that, you have cartridge operations like that mm. because you know pain is good. You have to resist. <laughs> well, pain is a sign that something's wrong, and if you ignore it, something will break in the long yes, exactly. term. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, um, so, um, and you will always have people, and nothing wrong with either way. To, who are traditionalists, who mm -hmm. are preservers, who want to preserve the art as it was. Um, that can be seen in Aikido and it can be seen probably in, 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 in Wing Chun or in other arts, but in Arnis maybe as well. And they're, they're also innovators, right? Remy was an innovator. Kaku Kanieta was an innovator. Um, but um, Ernesto was an innovator in, in that uh, sense. But, uh, but there's nothing wrong with either. Um, but um, I think if if you if you are so long in the art and like I've been training now Arne since for, for, uh, forty three years, um, you you make it your own and you you just cannot do it exactly the way it's been done in uh, nineteen seventy eight yeah. and yeah. and there's another thing when you look at people that learned. Like Aikido from Grandmaster Oeshiba in his late years. Yeah, it's different they, from the early years. They move more like an older man. Mm, that's true. And if you have earlier students, they move more, more yeah. agile. And that's, yeah. of course, you know, age has its tributes, right? You, you, you have this and that. You can't move this, and you can't st stand mm -hmm. that low and that deep anymore, and and things like that. Yeah. So, so you teach different when you get older. Yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah. I teach different when I'm again. My interest yeah. changes, right? Yeah. I used to I used to love kai kicking and forms. I'm not interested in either anymore, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, so your your focus changes over the, over the yeah. over the uh, over I mean, the year. Yeah, I think even even with from of some of the grandmasters from Lightning Scientific. They do found uh, Mang Ben's teaching change over the years as well, so it's 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 a common thing, because mm -hmm. uh, you basically grandmasters evolve as well. They have to they they change they change their moves according to what they can do during that time or the, what they were able to do. So it, it's it's really important to put that those things in yeah. context as well. Yeah. Let me, uh, Chris Chu. Uh, hi, Chris. Uh, I met your father once. I hope to meet you sometimes, uh, sometimes too. He has a good question. Um, uh, major difference, FMA in America versus Europe or in Asia? <sighs> it's, a tough, it's a tough question because I don't want to step on anybody's feet. Um, people in Asia generally I think, and you might tell me I'm right or I'm wrong, um, for the art itself. Mm. The, they value the art itself. You, Western people train for aims to reaching certain to yes. reach certain aims. This is why yes. Grandmaster Remy Prezes introduced the ranks and the, the belts, and that worked, f at least for us in the Western Hemisphere, quite well, because reaching the next level, the next level, that's baby steps, you know, that, that are in sight, reachable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you say I start and I want to become a master one day, ooh, it's a hell of a long way. You have to yes. go until you reach yeah. your goal. If you ever meet, if you if if you ever reach it, right? So so that that's I think a conceptual thing. Um, traditional Filipino masters and probably Asian masters teach more by showing and letting the people repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And whoever gets it gets it. 
and scarcely get yep. good, and who doesn't get it mm. falls through the grid. And it's probably not so bad that he falls through the grid. Yeah. In the West, it's more um, intellectual approach that you try to understand how a technique works, to, to that, yes. break it down into little parts, and yeah. to, to make yeah. to make the people go, ah, that's ah, oh, yeah, that's good, that's good, that that's why yeah. Western people, and I include myself, but also Americans, tend to talk a lot more on seminars than the Filipino masters do. They say, do this, pom, pom, pom. now go, one, two, three, go, 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 faster, 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 go, right? And nowadays, do this, pom, 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 yeah? And, the, and we go, okay, when you go, you, you move your hip and you bring your hand forward, see, then the, the triceps works better. And then you you, 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 know, you champion your stick here and then you, you bring it back, things like that, right? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's and different. there's nothing wrong with either. It's just a diff different the thing. Difference of mindset, difference of. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, uh, and um, and of course I cannot talk f either for FMA in Europe in general, nor for FMA in America in general. I have no database for that at all, mm -hmm. generally. But I think it's um, difficult for people that learn only in seminar format, mm. because if you've got the art as a whole, yeah, a seminar. Yeah. And then you think that's all. That's it. Um, so um, it's a little bit like Bruce Lee. Um, if you try to do the the Jit Kune Do or the the stuff that Bruce Lee did at his at the end of the li his life, and you only try to do that, you're missing out on all the training he did to be able to pull the things off that he could do at the end of his life. Mm. So I think if you but if you, when you train only in seminar format, and that's also in the West, in, in Germany, as well, same thing, um, then you get bits and pieces, and you might not be able to get the foundation. The foundation, yes. So, so and Grandmaster Remy, what he did, of course, and he took me when, uh, by the side and said, oh, when you do seminars, you have to do this, you have to entertain the people, you have to make them happy, and things like that, right? So he was very, he wanted people to come back to his seminars. So he yes, wanted to feel he would, of course. He was, mm. you know, he was living off that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, so so he, they got very much, the, I'd say, the cream and the cherry. Yeah. Cherry on the, on the top of the cake. Um, but maybe they miss the bread and the butter. The foundation, the, the, exactly. the work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm yeah. sure there were many who got it, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there are many who just started um, uh, when he was doing the tubby tubby. I met people that did left to right hand tubby tubby two, for two years before they first learned the right to right hand technique, right? Um, so if you only, only learn bits and pieces, then that the danger that you miss certain things that may be relevant or important to understand or deep know, be able to make the art good, um, that you miss them. And that's why we think it's important to have a program where you lay down what is the foundation, yeah. what's the intermediate, what's the advanced, yeah. what's the very advanced problem. So, so even if the people only only work on seminars, they still know, okay, we have to get that done and then before the, we go to the next. And that's why I think the ranks are so important because exactly. we move into the topics of the next level when we when we see that the te techniques of the, of the um, present level are must, not must, but are understood and could can be performed. And exactly. once that base is laid, then exactly. you move to the top. You can build the most beautiful house, but if you build it on sand, it's no good. Yep, 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 yep. that's true. So that's I mean, why I think a written program is, uh, uh, is, is good because people can reference and they say, okay, I, I know this and this, but I'm lacking there, so I can go back. And if you yeah. don't have that, it's harder. It's not. I don't say that it's not possible, right? It's, it depends mm -hmm. on the group size and so on, so many things. But it that's how we person as well. Through. Yeah, it depends on the person. But yeah, I mean, yes. like what like what you're saying. If you basically learn things from a seminar, it becomes yes. like like a choreographed dance, because you yes. don't know the foundation. You yes. can only play it within the yes. what you've seen in the seminar. Okay, you yeah. don't really understand the deeper. And the, uh, the deeper meaning or the deeper uh, in, well, uh, nuances. Just, just one example: if we, we and the modern artist is quite heavy on disarmings, mm -hmm. right? And the modern artist is as we do it: we catch this, try to catch the stick and do the disarming. And I understand that's very hard when you do sparring and so on. Yeah, no doubt. Even I mean, though sparring is not our main, main our main aim, but okay. But if you only train the disarmings, 
um, you're missing the blocking, the uh, covering the distance, the, the timing for the mm. for the trapping, and you need mm. that yeah. to be at the right place at the right exactly. time yeah. That's very to true. then pull off the disarming. Yeah, very and if you only if you only train the third, the dis or let, uh, the third thing, the disarming, mm -hmm. and you don't have the footwork, you don't have the shortening of the angle, you don't have the uh, the, uh, the blocking, right. yeah. then it's very very hard to do yeah. the cream and and the cherry on the cake. Exactly, very true. Right. Very um, true. So so and then you do it slow, and everything works on slow, and so that's why I changed a few techniques because I found I can't make them work mm. when we do them fast. Mm. So we tried to do them how we can do it. And yeah. just one example, and I don't want to get too technical, but when, when you have an incoming stick and you block the stick, very many people grab on the outside. If you get a strike to the left shoulder, on, on the outside and yeah. strike to the head. Mm. If somebody really strikes hard and fast, what's the fastest part of the stick? Well, the tip. Yeah. That's why we don't try to grab outside, but inside, inside. between my yeah. stick and the head. That's the yeah. slowest part. Yes. And that's not how it's traditionally done in many systems. But that way, I can it's very often get the stick, and I cannot get it when I'm outside. Mm. That's true. Now, do you want to train it traditionally and can't get things done? Perhaps I'm too stupid or didn't train enough or wasn't good enough, to. to but I change it to a way so that now it can be done a little easier. Mm. Mm. Yeah. One can say it's good or bad. You know, everybody has its own values there, but... Um, yeah. By mechanics again, you know what works and what doesn't. Exactly, exactly. And um, being um, being in the same field as you are, and because yeah. I also do quite a lot of like um, uh, functional exercises through yeah. to, to help people recover and and during the rehab period, I always yeah. find that there is no black and white really as far as functional movement is concerned. So sure. everything is adaptable to basically to the person. Okay, so and, you have to be able to find a way to yeah. teach something to a person and make it effective for that particular person. It yeah. might not be effective for me, but it would be effective for him, okay, yes. or her. So yeah, yes, and it's it's a little bit like like languages, right? Yes. Um, uh, some people have problems to speak their own language without mistakes. Mm -hmm. And then learning a second language is very very hard. So if you do one thing and you can do it good, be happy. Yes, exactly. And there are people who speak five languages fluently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and not everybody can achieve that. So for yeah. some people, yes. being able to learn many different things is good yes. and helpful. And for mm. some, it is. Yeah. But for me, I, I believe that there are, in self-defense, you can go, or in our martial arts, you can could go two ways. One is the, the, the principle of reduction. Yeah. That means... Don't train a lot of things. Like what Bruce Lee said, don't fear the man yeah. that did not 10,000 kicks, fear a man that, um, that trained one kick 10,000 yeah. times. Okay, so you did your punch and you really can knock the people over and somebody suddenly wears a helmet. Or you can really break somebody's chest bone and he wears a leather jacket. So when you're a one-trick pony, means you can pull that off better than anything else. And there are stories of judo Olympic champions who people say they can't do judo. They do their three things and they're better than anybody in the world but within, within their certain settings of rules where they can, where they train yes. and where they fight, they yeah. can apply it. Mm -hmm. um, so for which rules are in self-defense? Uh, what are you allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do? Well, I don't recall any. Mm -hmm. So when you go judo, you say, I don't have to defend against kicks, against, against knees, against elbows, against strikes to the head. I have to defend against grabs and things like that, right? So in self-defense on the street, any, anything can happen. So when you reduce what you do to only very, very, very few things, you might be good at that, at those things, yes. but that might not be adaptable to every situation. Everything so is. I believe um, in variety. Try to do as many different stuff there, and then whatever you do, you say, "Ah, oh, we, I know that. I've, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there." So, so you can connect to those to those mm -hmm. uh, things. Not good for everybody. Not right for everybody. Um, but yes. you really just have to decide which way you're going to go. You can't do variety yeah. and, and reduction at at, at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we believe more in the variety. Yeah. Right. To 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 you know to do all different kind of stuff. So once you get in a certain situation, then you say, "I've been there before. Now, now I know what to do from there." From there. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah it's not everybody's piece of cake, but uh, it's ours. 
that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's true. Yeah, not everybody yeah. would agree to it. Not every, it's not everybody's uh, um, um, way of doing it. But at least, especially for instructors, it's really important that we do get to understand it as well, so that we can always adapt to our yes. students and also for us, basically how. Yes we how we look at things and how we train things as well and, and, and that, that's what jim remy did also when when he was teaching he saw this this person is good in striking so he taught him locks mm. oh he's good in knife so he taught him stick you know mm. or or if somebody said i want to be interested i'm interested in that so he he, he went that way so everybody got some got a yeah bit yeah. different piece of the cake and i don't honestly don't know if anybody has has the whole cake I don't definitely don't, you know. I definitely don't have the whole cake mm -hmm. uh, of of his modern artists. But through having learned with so many of his students in the Philippines and, and and with him as well, I think I have a pretty good oversight what his teaching was from the '60s to the '90s. Mm -hmm. And I definitely don't have everything. Nobody has, but uh, I think I've got a pretty good idea. Yeah. About what the art modern artists is all yeah. all of. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's it's actually, besides knowing that, it's really more important on how you can adapt it to yourself, to your student, to basically where you are. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, that, yeah. And okay, if you have so, a 120 kilo bouncer and you've got a 50 kilo woman and you just tell them, oh, the same technique works with both of you. No. no. You, that's the thing with the skeleton and the muscles. The skeleton, the 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 the, the concept may be the same, but then 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 the lighter person must, must should adapt here, here, and here. Can be faster, can be quick, quicker, and the heavier yeah. person uh, adapt this and this and this way. Right. So exactly. already you've got two people and two different things. Yeah. Still that's the same true. system. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. That's very true. I I I wholeheartedly agree. Oh, you got a nice comment from George there. This is the reason why you are a Datu. Thank you very much. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with Thanks that. Thanks for the honor. Yeah. Actually, uh, I was about to ask you earlier on, how, how did your educational background help you propagate modern artists in Germany? But you already gave the answer. <laughs> okay, so we already... Yeah, and, and, and you, we say you, you can't get out of your skin. It's a German saying, mm. right? You are who you are. And and yes. teaching what I think is right is who I am and why... Mark, Mark Lynn yeah. might be able to to comment on that because I worked a lot with him in, in Texas and I asked him, what are you doing? And I show you how we do it and I try to explain him why we do things. And then it's up to him to see, it yeah, makes sense or say, stupid Germans, they don't know what they're talking about. I keep my stuff. Fine, fine. I don't mm -hmm. try to establish uh, the German Army Association in America, not yeah, at all. Yeah, when I'm in the yeah, States, yeah, yeah. I try to give and I try to share what I know. And everybody, yeah. if somebody likes it, take it. And if he doesn't yeah. like it, okay, exactly. I'm not forcing anything. Yeah, but try it. Try yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Try to share is the most important. And try to basically send your, your message across in, yes. in, in, in a way that people will be able to appreciate it and learn from it. That's the that's important yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so, folks, do you have any more question regarding that area? Yes, Mark. Yes, thank you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Four times. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Look, I was, I was, the, I think the first foreigner. I mean, Bram Frank was teaching in Russia in the um, uh, the army there for one seminar before me, but I was in Russia in, in two thousand five, I think, the first time, and then I was reinvited twenty times to Russia. To teach there. Wow! So, so they must have found something that that they like with how, how and what I do. Yeah. Okay. There's a nice comment yeah, right. from Ryan here. Every time yes, teacher yes. and I teach together, students say, "Well, you do both the technique the same, but it is different." Yes. Everybody <laughs> has a different touch to it. And that's exactly. why I, I, I love doing these things with Brian or with others. Um, because yes. you know he's doing ah he's moving a little bit this way i don't move a little this and compare why we do things and uh, that's yeah. very interesting but still we see it's the same rule yeah now this yeah. is this is Dieter. this is the reason like for example ever since i learned uh stuff like even from 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 martial arts to dancing i yeah. always go to different teachers why because sometimes one teacher can explain one a, a, a concept or a better than the other. Also, I can see the differences that I see from one teacher to the other when they move gives me a, a various ways of seeing the actual yeah. movement. So that if 
if it comes to a point where in my student asks me something, it might not be my choice of move, but at least I can share it from a, from a different perspective. And we are living now in a time where that is easy. Yes. Um, 20, 30 years from now, you learn from a teacher and you go to another, boy, did he get pissed. Right. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and he might not teach you anymore because, uh, you know, because, oh, he's not loyal to our system and so on and so forth. And with mm -hmm. the seminars, with the YouTube and with the videos and DVDs, you know, it, yeah. it got so open, it got so free. But before, and I understand that because if you look from it from the historical perspective, uh, uh, perspective um, the Philippines had so many islands and so many tribes and not mm -hmm. everybody was friend with everybody. So they were fighting with each other. Mm -hmm. So... If you teach your techniques to, to the group else. in the next village yes. and they attack you, they know yes. what you're doing. Yes, so you exactly. keep it's it a, to yourself. Yeah, being shared, yes. Mm. And that in, in, the, in the 70s already still, and in the 80s sometimes, it was still deeply that, engraved yeah. in the master's heart mm. that yeah. if you go away, they felt that you betrayed them. Yeah, that's true. And as, as a young teacher, when I was 22, 23, 24, I had a hard time accepting that my students might go on a seminar with another master um, mm -hmm. uh, because you fear oh, that he might be better than I am, I might lose my students and, and so on, mm -hmm. until you, you understand that the shorter, on a, the shorter you keep the leash, they stay a little while with you, but then they feel that they are not free and they cut the leash. Yeah, and if you have, if you have a long leash, they go here and they go there. You know what happened? Boom! They always bounce back. They come back to you. They come back to you. Yeah, that's true. That's that's. But, but it's, it, 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 it is a process that you have to go through, and mm. that your heart has to go through because it's an emotional yeah. problem that you have. Yes, and not a, not a, not a, not a rational. They go yeah. away. Hmm. <laughs> do I like that? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do encourage my students actually. To, yeah. to to learn and to take another uh, another art for example because it I I do believe in um, in trying to uh, get them exposed in different things so that basically it helps them with their learning because that's how that's basically yeah. how I grew that's yeah. that's how I how I enrich myself as well whatever yeah. whatever whether it is in dance or in martial arts so I did the same yeah. thing so yeah. yeah okay so yep all right. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Brian. Um, okay, so I think we do discussions that we we just had. What advice can you give our viewers, both practitioners and instructors, in using science in both training and teaching FMA? I think the acceptance of a technique meaning you see something say oh yeah that's nice i want to do that it's much bigger when the people understand why things work how things work and feel that they work mm -hmm. and contrary to say my teacher used to do it that way do it yeah that's second true. best Second best, yeah. in, my, in my opinion. When this is the same thing, because you do it like your teacher is doing it, and that's the way, that's how it works. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. right? But as an explanation, um, I do it while my teacher does it, and I don't explain it to you. I can't explain to you. I don't want to explain it to you. That's sec second best. Sometimes I don't explain because I want the people to explore. Yes. And when I see what they do, how they explore, then I give mm -hmm. them my explanation to see yes. how it's as far, There's, for example, yeah. one example, one, one certain disarming techniques, <clears throat> a disarming technique with Grandma Sir um, Ernesto, the, um, uh, whatever, a strip, a strip on the number two. That never worked when I did it, never worked. And it took me four months, five months, and until I understood what I did wrong. And I don't give that away. Okay. Well, I show the techniques to my to my students, and they say, "No, try it," and then we see if it works. And if it doesn't mm -hmm. work, I let you know. And yeah. so I let them go for ten minutes, fifteen minutes, just to make their experience. And then I tell, see, it doesn't work because if you do this, if you try it now, oh, now it works. Ah, right. Sometimes I do it straight away. Sometimes I I I, I, I let them try it out a little bit. But yes. generally. 
Um, if a student feels it works and if a student understands what he's doing, that helps, in my opinion, in the Western society. Um, and it gives you also, as an instructor, the feeling that you give the best you can. Yes. Uh, and support whatever you do with data, with facts, yes. with... Uh, like mm. if, if I want... Oh, where's my hand? If I want to push yeah. this way, uh, push something away, well, how would you push pull a door? Uh, push when you open a door. Do, show me. How would you push a door? Open? Okay. How would you pull somebody? Somebody. How do you what? How would you pull somebody? Something. Just pull. pull something towards you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you've got palm out, palm in, palm out, palm out. D depends on like, how I grab the person. No, it doesn't. When you do, <laughs> when you do, when you do bicep curls. Yeah, I do. Bicep what do you do? Curls. Ah. When you do push-ups or when you do when you do bench pressing, how do you? Ah, now we come to biomechanics. The body has certain muscles and they work they work a certain way. When you have your palm in, that's a position where your biceps and the brachioradialis and radialis muscles work much better to pull something in. Yes. Yeah, but I when do, you want to yeah. push something away, that yeah, doesn't work because the triceps works much better yes. if the hand is away from you, if yeah. the hand points away from you. So, yeah. and if you know that, and if I want to keep some something away from me I would be here but if I want to grab something I would I would be here so when I see somebody in a stance like that I say you want to push somebody away with that position where well, we've got a problem no, 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 no. you have to have it be at least yes. this way because now your triceps mm. works yeah. now this this yeah you wouldn't still you know if <laughs> that collapses this doesn't yeah it is that way <laughs> and then I let them try it okay you have to tell them okay hold your arm like this Okay, hold it yeah. like that. Oh, which is yeah, more stable? Exactly. You decide, bang. Mm -hmm. Then you've backed up your claim, do it this way and not that way, with um, a little bit of science uh, and uh, some experience um, that the people try themselves and say, oh, yeah. this is much better. Now, what works better in remembering things? Oh, how did the master, the teacher, the whoever taught me? Or mm -hmm. what is functional? What does work better? Yes. So if you only try, always try to remember what somebody did, mm -hmm. it's much harder than to see, oh, this works better, and then it's grown, or it's already yours. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And yeah. that's just yeah. the way that, 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 that is my approach to teaching. And I don't say that that's the only one, I don't say that's the right yeah. one, yeah. but it is mine. As we said, mm. you can't leave your skin. You yeah, leave exactly, your skin. yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah. yeah, George commented, I love when the light bulb lights up. When the student realizes, yes, 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 we had that in the pre pre talk, right? Um, yes, we did. I, I get my kicks not by being able to to disarm a person or to to lock a person. I get my pick, kick kicks from seeing somebody doing something, mm -hmm. and that doesn't work. And I tell them, move your little finger one inch yes. to the left, and yes. suddenly it works. You go, wow, <laughs> bang! That's what I think. Yes, like, yes, yeah. And that's 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 what I like to do. I like. To do to analyze technology, we call it um, mistake analysis and analyzing, to see which is the most important mistake to co to correct first, and yeah. then the second and the third level. Sometimes there is none. Sometimes there are five. Sometimes there's only one. But trying to see that, and sometimes you don't have a, a lot of time to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but that that that's what I really really enjoy to yeah. see how how can I improve the the movement, the technique, the execution, the functionality. The effectus, effectivity of a technique by just simply manipulating the body a little yes. bit, and I do, um, I do one session sometimes. It's it's not very successful in seminars because it's really difficult to get the people involved. But I call it a little bit slippery. Um, show me yours, and I show you mine. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know what I mean, yeah, right? Political correctness, huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I know it's, what it's, I know. It's, I know, it's, I know. The, the, the sentence is formulated like that in purpose, <laughs> in purpose, right? But what I want to do, I show you, show me how you do this technique. I show you how I do the technique. I mm. try to give hints. And um, it's in the beginning, it's difficult to get people involved in that because they are trying to they're sometimes afraid of opening up and perhaps saying, oh, I can't do this one that well and, yes. and being show to the, to the group that they have a problem yeah. in one technique. So usually it's good when 
one or two of the instructors have the first two things so that the students mm -hmm. say, okay, the instructors ask something, so yes. then I can ask something. Then yes. the, the lesson starts rolling, and I enjoy that a lot because I just wow. see and say, try this, try that. But if you don't get that and the white belt asks, uh, why do I have to do this one? The <laughs> lesson won't, get, won't go well because the higher degrees wouldn't say, no, 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 no not for me. <laughs> I, I don't show you mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I don't want to do yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are, there are certain things, like, for example, even when I teach, like, Qigong, the energy drills and everything, I prefer for them to experience it first before I explain yeah. it. Yes, so yeah, sure. It makes it Hello Dan. Dan Anderson yeah. just turned in. Hi Dan. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, yeah. And yeah, the light bulbs, it's 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 really like even uh I would say very satisfying for us as teachers yes. Yes. when our students get all those light bulbs lighting up when they when they learn because we know the problem is if the room stays stays dark <laughs> that's the you throw thing. in the light bulbs and they just <laughs> don't work yeah maybe it's not it's, it's not the day it's not the night <laughs> it happens. may happens. happen yeah. it may happen yeah. <laughs> so it's not always sun the sun is not always shining right <laughs> yep i always keep my fingers crossed one day one day it's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, great interview. The dub is proud and lucky to have him as GM, head coach and board member. Thank wow. you, Alex. That's that's really nice. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Actually, my next question is, which is in line with that. Uh, what were the things that? Uh, oh no. What challenges did you have to go through when you were establishing the German Arnis Association or the DAB? Well, several things. First, um, we were in an association being in the beginning before the DAV, where, like Arjuken, five, seven, ten different styles were taught. Mm -hmm. And then we said, no, we don't want to feel like the fifth wheel in a car. Mm -hmm. We want to do our own thing. We make our own association. And this is it. Yeah. Those idiots, stick work, nobody wants to do stick, you know, wait for three months and they're out of out of business right now 30 years later you know i do an interview with american uh, uh uh website and you know i'm i'm quite known all over the world with people that um that that are in the same area so first acceptance right mm -hmm. who know, knew in the 70s or in the 80s what filipino martial arts is you don't always have a stick with you you still hear this question this this thing right yeah, um and and uh, and establishing that that it is an art for itself, that it it is worthwhile, and creating interest um, that had to overcome problems. Right. Yeah. Um, the good thing is that people that were sometimes 20, 30 years in other arts sort of got bored with the other arts, and they looked for some new boundaries, for some new horizons. Mm -hmm. And then you see this. 28 inch stick or 70 centimeter stick in the hand and said geez this these 60 centimeters i didn't know before so that's a new horizon exactly. so that's how you got involved with with other people from other martial arts that of course helped um and i i very strongly think it helped that we have a uniform that people that belong to our group yes and first i mean um we we had black in the in this Beginning of the 80s, we had black pants and different colored uh, T-shirts. And then we changed to the red pants. And in the beginning, we didn't like it. Now, it's uh, it's a signal. If you see somebody with red pants, you know it's Arnis. Yes. Right? Exactly. If you yes. see somebody with black pants, it can be everything. Anything. Everything yes. and anything. Mm. So, so that, that's a good thing. Now, wearing a certain uniform gives the people a feeling that they belong together. They, yeah. That's true. Um, and pride. that for, for group dynamic, it's important mm. that people say, oh, I come, I go, whatever I want. They belong together, right? And that the uniform is just a signal for that. Yeah. Having a structured program where one step come, one comes after the other, one technique comes after the other, whether you found, have the basics laid out, then mm. you have examination, mm. then the next and the next, I think is important because we talked about that baby steps, having, having aims, goals that are reachable, um, uh, and, and then the next. And mm -hmm. I believe it's also important that you do not teach the whole program to everybody um, immediately. 
Yeah. I do not teach black belt students, black belt content in general to student levels. I don't do that. And that's for a reason. I can explain it to you. I, okay. I, did, I did Kung Fu for four, five, six years with my Chinese, Chinese teacher, Huang Jingzhen. He's from Taiwan. He was a um, mm -hmm. good teacher. Um, and he always taught the same thing for everybody, which was fine. Um, over the years, I could make the master degree, which was, yeah, if you had the colored degrees, a master. For us now, master is different, but uh, we can talk about that a little later. Yeah. Um, and it bothered us that we learned the same techniques that the white and the yellow and the green belt learned. So we asked him, Master Huang, can't we as a black belt have something for us? And he said, yeah, okay, we do. And he did a cannonball forms, Pauzo, he called it, right? Very nice, you know, wow, beautiful movement. We were happy. We, the black belt, got, got something for us. Yeah. Three months later, he taught Pauzo for yellow belts in a seminar. And we said, oh, no. <laughs> and this, this emotional disappointment, mm -hmm. um, having worked for something, yeah. got yeah. something mm -hmm. that was then handed out to everybody. OK. Still sticks. Still mm. sticks. So I believe that's what we do from white belt to fifth degree, fifth down, fifth degree black belt. Whenever you make an examination, the program after that, I won't say it will blow you away, but you feel like a beginner. You learn yeah. so many yeah. new things, so many different things um, that you will be challenged to master yeah. those yeah. and then go to the next where, will you, the, where will you will know, shit, I'll be a beginner again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. the next level. Yeah. So if you, do, if I, I, I have one friend of mine, he did jujitsu in Austria. And when he was blue belt, he stopped doing mm -hmm. jujitsu. Why? Because he said, I've got the whole program to fifth down. I've, I've learned it. I trained it. Why shall I stay? And on the end, I don't think that a blue belt has the experience and the, the knowledge and the abilities to do the, yeah. the higher yeah. stuff. But the yeah. blue belt doesn't know that he can't. <laughs> Still, he stopped because said, I've got it all. Yeah. So then yeah, yeah. here at the next, next level, nothing new. Mm. So I think it's it's important to, to keep the curiosity of the people yes, and be yes, able sure. to give them new things once they have achieved a goal and say, yeah. okay, I've reached the horizon, where's the next? And I show them, that's your next target, that's your next mm. goal. And then the next and the next. It's like you, you, you do um, mountain climbing, right? You yeah. reach the hill, there's a mountain. You reach the next mountain, oh, there's an even higher mountain. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's and good. And yeah. I think that's important because then you have the feeling I've achieved something. Achieved something, yes. And when I've achieved them, while I've achieved something, I unlock a next level. Mm -hmm. And if you don't give that feeling to them, um, then it's it's not v valuable what yeah. you give to them. They don't yeah. value because everybody gets everything. What's the, yep. what the heck? Yep. Exactly, yes. But that's just my personal belief. And mm -hmm. the way I think we do we do it in, in the models. In seminars, it's a little different. In camps, it's a little different. I, I don't go only by the belt, but we go a little bit of answers. And, and you sometimes look over, we call it over the rim of the of the of the plate right, to see mm -hmm. what's there, what's there. Yes, yes. To 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 tease them. But you, they don't yeah. get the whole program, right? Because I think it's important. It's important that once they made a degree, there will new stuff be coming. Yeah. And one more thing um with um Master, grandmaster level. I just want to want to just briefly um, address that. In Germany, we've got um, when you learn a job like cook or baker, mm -hmm. they do a three years apprenticeship, and after those three years, and they do it full time, of course, they go yeah. to the bakery and they go to business school and they make the certificate and then they are baker, and then they work for three or four years or five years as a baker. And then they go to master school, three, mm -hmm. four, five years into master school. And once they finish that, then they are master of their trade. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way it works in Germany. Yeah. Now, when you look at martial arts, you, you do whatever martial arts. I don't want to pick on any, really. I don't want to put down any. Um, you go twice a week for training, do that for three, four years, and you come mm -hmm. first down, black belt, master. 
All right, so you've got the <laughs> people that do their business, they do it for 10 years full time, 40 hours a week, and then they, if they go to special school, then they might get their master's degree, and you train four years, twice four a week, years. and you're yeah. a master. Jeez, that doesn't fit. It doesn't, no, it doesn't. No. So for us in the German Honest Association, and I don't, don't, you know, don't want to put that on anybody else. For us, the first down to fifth down are experts. We have first and second is guru, three, four, five is senior guru, but those are for us experts. Yeah. Sixth down is master. Sixth okay. down, you have 20 years in honest. Mm. All right, that's all right. And seventh down is senior master, eighth and ninth and tenth is, is grandmaster for us. Yeah. Now, um, not everybody did it that way in the Philippines. No, and we adapted that way. Why? And I want to just explain that. When I saw Cristino Vasquez, ninth down senior master, all right, in the 80s, 90s. Then I see here in Germany, Taekwondo, fourth down grandmaster, ninth down senior master. Normal is sixth down grandmaster in Taekwondo yeah. or in karate. But yeah. I've seen fourth down calling themselves grandmaster. Fourth down. Okay. Yes. Too early. But even sixth down. Now, what was Remy's, Grandmaster Remy's biggest dream? I think one of his biggest dreams was that modern Arnis becomes a household name, becomes a well accepted martial art in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you want to play with the big boys, you have to play with the rules of the big boys. So, and I've, we've looked at how is it internationally done. And internationally, it's done that most of many systems have the grandmaster at eighth, some at six. Okay. And we said six, six for grandmaster is too early, but the ninth not being a grandmaster compared to taekwondo, hapkido, karate, judo, um, jiu-jitsu, what, whatever, grandmaster is six that devalues the ninth or the eighth. It does. So we thought it's right to have six and seven as master, senior master, eight, nine, ten as grandmaster, as most of the martial arts in the world handle this. Yeah. yeah. Did that's our amazing. teacher did it that same way? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. We do it in the DIV that way because we believe that's a good way because people can relate to that. Yeah. And we we use. I know the Filipinos don't like the, to use the word Dan. They like mm -hmm. to, seventh degree black belt and so on. We use Dan because it's a household word. Yeah. We also use Lacan Lima for fifth, fifth degree. Fine. Nobody knows what a Lacan Lima is. Fifth Dan, everybody knows. Fifth degree. What is a degree? Fifth degree black belt. Okay. Fifth degree black belt is yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Dan, bang. Everybody knows what Dan is. Koreans, even though it's not Korean word, use Dan, right? Yeah. They didn't um, know. Yes. <laughs> it's, exactly. it's just not a Japanese term. It's, it's a household term that it, the yes. world that yeah. has touched martial yes. arts in yes. some aspect can understand it means that you have yeah. reached the black belt level yeah, yeah and yeah, i know yeah. it's not a filipino term but we still use it just to to easier connect to other people yes. and to yeah. you know to, with one word to know that they know what's 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 going on yeah right? nothing wrong with that so so do we do it exactly the same way no do we do it right i don't know but we think we do it the best to our beliefs mm. Yeah, and it's important that basically you adjust things also as well to to your to your group at one point. Yes. So you basically work on like as we, as you said earlier on, you get the main skeleton of the modern Arnis Association, and then adapt things basically yes. to your to your group. Yes, yes. And by now, of course, we have through the decades we do it, we have a set system and set set rules and set mm -hmm. set program that we have, and we have a trainer courses where we teach our trainers how to, how to teach and not only the techniques but how to deal with people and how to uh, how to yeah. be a teacher and, and, and things like yeah. that. And and uh, I mean the result. If you, I, I sent you the link for for our black belts, right? Yes. Yeah. You yeah. see, you see, I, I'm the tenth, and we have to. I've got two, two eighth down grandmasters. Why are they eighth down grandmasters? We have to describe that. But one reason is because their students are masters already. Mm -hmm. So if your student produce, yeah, if you have produced masters as masters, students, yeah. at least that's one reason. I mean, they are in the arts since 35 or 37 to 43 years. You know. Mm -hmm. yep. um, yeah. 
and then you see fifth down, you see fourth down, you see, th I, th I think we've got some like 350, 450 black belts uh, on that page that I've all examined personally. personally. Um, and, um, um, and, and that's just what, what, they, uh, what we achieved in the four, 35 years yeah. or what, that yeah. we've been doing that. Yeah. And I don't th say that this is the best way of doing things, but for us, it did work quite it's, well in yeah, Germany. Exactly. Does it work yeah. in other other countries? I don't know. Try it. I don't know the mentality yeah. of the other countries as well. And you probably have a New York, the Texas, and the California mentality, and they don't have to do anything with each other. Maybe. Yeah. In, in, yeah, in the States. Yeah. Uh, well, London, Cornwall, and Scotland, you know, the people are different in different yeah. parts of the, of, true, of the country. True. So true. Actually, yeah. my, my, my uh, mentor and friend, John, is going through a, the same way of uh, restructuring yeah, the way sure. he teaches things and uh, great uh, yes. uh, his students in Israel and also like yes. all the other uh, lightning combatives um, yeah. as, associates. Israeli so, people are very, very uh, technical uh, and, 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 and brain-driven people. They like they to understand, are, and, and I'm sure John are, adapts because he's successful in Japan, yeah, in, in, yeah, in Israel. Yeah. Yes, yes. And he has been he has been actually doing well in adapting to 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 their needs and to their to their way, yeah. to their mindset, yeah. to their mentality. So yeah, That's the way I'm to do. lucky to be his student now. Yeah. Oh yeah, Martin. Proof is in the pudding. The DAV is one large group. Also very skilled students overall. Great program. Thank you, Mark. On to you. <laughs> yeah. Mark was one of the people and from America who took the effort to come to our summer camps. Every second oh, year wow. we have a summer camp where we have uh, we train for one full week, six, seven hours a day. And we have usually 180 people to train for a week. Well done. Well done. And, and, and what is more, even more important, one week with 180 people, and no problems between each other. Yeah. No quarrels, just having fun. I, I say one week, just thinking red and white, red pants, yeah. white t-shirt. You know, <laughs> just everybody has the same goal and yeah. you, you enjoy and our time. And, 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 you know, no, no quarrels <laughs> and having a good time. And that's what I said in our pre-interview, right? There are yes, two things exactly. that are important when you, when, when, you, when you learn a martial art, you have to trust your instructor that he teaches you something valuable. Exactly. If it's really that way or not, it doesn't really matter in the beginning. You have to have the feeling. You don't should not ask every time when he sees here taking, oh, does that work? That's no good, you know, and you won't stay mm -hmm. there. And and do you have a good time? Do you like yeah. the instructor? Do you like the students? Do you enjoy do you have are you having fun? Mm -hmm. And if those two things are there, yeah, you're right. Doesn't matter which system you you, you train. And once you're you you have a foundation a system, you can still explore many, many other things, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. the fun yeah. aspect is, is important in our society. Yeah. Yes. Kelly Warden. Datu Kelly Warden is here. Always clear Ooh. and precise. Datu Dite. Kelly, thanks for yeah, tuning in. Nice to here. see you here. Wow. <laughs> it's like a reunion wow. for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. It's an honor that the people uh, that those people take them take their time just to listen. Exactly. Uh, to yeah. Me talking, telling a few stories, and some stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Honestly, you know that. Uh, yeah. People like Brian, like Dan, like uh, uh, no. Kelly Warden, take their time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Feel honored. <laughs> Yeah, George said that you have built a fantastic organization. And Mark said, one of the best seminars I've ever been to. That's the summer camp, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Oh, Dan, uh, Jim Dan Anderson said, I will attest to the success of Dieter's camps. Very well done. And yes, no differences between the attendees, just training our asses off. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but and Dan was there for a camp, for for one summer camp, and and, and taught there, and um, that was um, very enjoyable for all of us. And he, I think, he enjoyed it as well. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, I mean, as 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 I see it, you you're you're really running a very successful organization there in 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 Germany. And even to... like reaching it out to the sharing it out to the rest of the world. And... Yeah, I mean, we have, we have branches and connections in in, uh, in um, France, in Switzerland, in Austria, in Hungary, in uh, uh, Czech Republic, in in, in Russia, and uh, and uh, I used to teach a lot in in, in Scandinavia, um, which stopped when we went to uh, 
Grandmaster Ernesto, uh, Remy Prison, they stayed with Ernesto. Um, but, um, you know, we have ties to many, to many countries and some countries adapt our program and some countries just sometimes invite me and, and, and or other instructors of the DAV to, to learn and that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. We're, we're open. We're happy about people that, um, that enjoy us and enjoy yeah. what we do. I mean, if, if, if you have any, any, anything coming up, always you can let me know so I can always share it through like the FMA discussion page and yeah, also with the you. British Council yeah. page. So at this, um, yeah. Actually, this week should have been the the seventeenth, I think, sixteenth or seventeenth DAV summer camp, oh, and we okay. called it off due to due to due to COVID. Yeah, no, everything is still touch yep. and go at the moment. Yes, yes, yes. In two years' time, again, one week of training with a lot of fun <laughs> and a lot of people. And uh, I mean, just for for that you understand how we do it. When you do 100, 180 people training, you can't have groups with 180 people. So we have five, six, seven instructors teaching parallel, <clears throat> each saying, okay, my program is open to everybody. My program is only for green belts and higher, yeah. mine is only for brown belts, beyond black belts. So that that those 180 scatter to yeah. different, yeah, yeah, uh, to yeah, different, yeah. different yeah. levels, different groups. So everybody can make his own summer camp yes. because nobody will do the same classes uh, with, with the others. So. Um, yeah. There we have usually 15 instructors uh, teaching mm -hmm. um, um, and we share knowledge and, and different mm -hmm. experiences and yeah. uh, having fun. Yeah, it's actually a good way of doing that because at least you can cater to the different skill levels of your students rather than it's like a, um, uh, a shotgun type of thing. So at least you can get people getting into classes wherein they know they would they would learn and enjoy more. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they can, can go to classes that, that they are interested in uh, or what they're lacking in. Yes. Things things like that. And they yeah. they see the, the differences of the different instructors. You see, I mean, I, some of, I told you also, I think one of my biggest, uh, what I think is one of my biggest achievements is that I have students, 50 or more students that are with me since 25 years or longer. So, um, this means that we treat them in a way that they feel home, that they come after yeah, so many years, yeah. they still come to the same as they still still come to for, for the training. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not one of those people moves the same as the other does because they all found their way. And that's also the thing that you as an instructor have to learn mm. um, that you are not in a karate system. And that I don't mean that negative. Yeah. In karate, if you, if you see a, a synchron cutter with three people doing this exactly the same thing at the same time, it's beautiful to watch and that's just uh you know the way it's done and so that's, that's okay um, but we like to be individuals and we we also let them people do their individual yeah. things um and that's why everybody has a little different way of doing it and it's it's you have to let go as an instructor mm. not to make carbon copies but yes to you know to to Put them on the way and let them go. You know, yes. it's it's it's, it's uh, sometimes emotionally hard, but it's it's the right thing to do. It's like yeah. kids, you know. Yes. My 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 youngest son moved exactly. out uh, a month ago, right? So you had him for twenty plus years, and and um, wow, well, it's it's hard to let them go, but it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Yes, yes, yes. And you try to basically help them, uh, help mold themselves basically as well yes, to become yes. who they are. As far that's as what it. Remy said. Make it the audio. Make it your own. Yes. That's yeah. why we do. That's what we yes, try to exactly. do. And still, skeleton and muscles have a common thread, a common thing that binds us together. Yes, that's yeah. very true. That's very that's true. to keep that balance. Yeah, I do agree. I do agree. Oh, okay. So we have a reaction from Beatrice. Not all of us. Well, oh, that, that's probably referring to a, to a class that, uh, that Dan gave, where um, <laughs> it might have been a little painful. I don't know, Bea. Um, she's a very good third down for, with us in uh, Beatrice Weinish. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, in the end, believe me, even if it was pain, Bea enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I mean, from where you are now with uh, your, the, Ger the German Arnis Association and your um, your accomplishments, where do you see yourself about five years from now, both personally and uh, with your group? 
Well, a student and a friend of mine who has anything just got ninth in, uh, in a Kung Fu style asked me once I got 10th, how does it feel? Isn't the aim gone? And I said, no, mm -hmm. I feel I've arrived and I don't feel pressure anymore. Um, and I feel that people appreciate what I or we are doing and I don't really want to be any different. Um, I want to continue what I'm doing. I want to help my students to learn to, to get better. I want to try to keep as good relation as possible to all uh, FMA and modern artists, people and groups all over the world um, uh, and to, to enjoy uh, training with them and uh, together. We try to have as many groups as possible. We were over 80 groups in Germany before COVID. Nobody knows what's after COVID now, but you know, we, we had that. We were close to 2000 members or a little less, a little below that, which is for Germany, not a bad number for, for one association in one style. Um, and we would like to expand on that. Um, and uh, um, I would just l like to enjoy my time with my friends and, and, and students and, you know, enjoy what we're doing and keep on learning because sometimes a, a white belt asks me, you know, can I do this? And I said, oh, shit, I never thought about that. Yes, but you can do that. Thank you, Court. <laughs> Stole it from you. Thank you very much. So you can learn from from everybody and any, anybody. Yeah, you learn know. from your students, even the, even yeah, the new Sometimes ones. it is that way, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and that's never, okay. That's all right. Never ending learning um, for us. Yeah, and and you know I I don't have to hunt anything I don't have to prove anything anymore and I um and and that that's nice uh, that's uh, that's nice and uh, if people don't like me that's fine you don't have to come to our seminars you know you can't please everybody yes. but um, I don't and I don't like to be the person that's tough and pisses everybody off and you know I don't I don't need that I, I like to be nice and I like to be friendly and uh, that's also. Um, if, and that's definitely everywhere in the DRV. Doesn't matter if you're white belt or if, if you're sixth or seventh dan. We talk with to you the same way. Mm -hmm. So we try not to have any attitude. Yeah. And um, yeah. and we have a saying that says that the um, um, the snake the fish stinks from the head. Mm, Means okay. if yeah. the head is an idiot you yeah. might be finding a lot of idiots following him. And if you are a nice guy, you might find a lot of nice people nice following. If you, are, if you are an excellent fighter, you might find a lot of fighters. If you are a bouncer or something that's really street fighting guy, you might find yeah. something like that. So, so another saying we say is, uh, a like, like to like attracts each other. Yes. So, yeah. so, I try to be friendly. I try to encourage my, my, my instructors to be friendly, not to be arrogant, to accept any kind of question and not to say, ah, oh, you green belt, you just learn something. And then you know, once, once you get good, you, know, you can ask me, you, know, you don't want that. Um, and I don't have seen that in many, many places, but I, I did see it um, sometimes and, and we just don't appreciate that. And that's also, I think, what the people appreciate when they come to us that uh, you don't really know if if uh, the person you you're working with uh, or training with if, if he's a fabric worker or if if, if he's a doctor or, in, or a lawyer you just don't know because yeah there should be no act no attitude we we as uh, instructors try to show not uh, no attitude and you know that we try that that yeah goes down from from the top yeah. to the bottom yeah, and I think it's but, life. Life is too short to have all those all those dramas. <laughs> yes, you yes. have to enjoy sometimes, it. Sometimes, sometimes it has to be done, or you know, sometimes drama happens and you can't avoid yeah, it. Well, right? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, shit hit the fan. You know, it comes to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> and it comes back. Whatever you do, it comes back to you, good or yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another saying we have is, uh, whatever you you shout into the forest, the echo comes back. Echo comes back. Yes, that's true. That's it goes back to you. If you try to to have positive, top positive energy, good energy, positive uh, positivity, that which we hope that comes back. And you know, talking about the students that were with me since twenty five years, with at least with a few, it worked. Mm, mm, that's good. Yeah. Oh, okay. We've got. Hel Hel Hela? Hela. Yeah. And Beatrice. Yeah, I did enjoy all the classes then. Thanks for the yes. compliment. I was referring to the training, training this week anyway. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, oh, this week, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, folks, do you still have any question for GM Dether? So let us know. Just uh, post it in the comment box. Okay. Um, so do you offer services online for those for those who would like to experience uh, your teaching, even though it's not face-to-face? -face? Yes. Um, during the COVID times, I did uh, a lot. And I call it a lot because it was honest life online training, a lot. Um, <laughs> I did it mainly in German, but I also translated things. Um, since beginning of the 90s, my main job, besides being the chief instructor of the German Honest Association, is uh, to produce martial art instructional videos. Okay. Um, uh, from there, I also made uh, seminar videos from the seminars I did, and also this a lot. Um, and uh, I have my company, it's called Abanico, like okay. the fan moon, A-B-A-N-I-C-O dot D-E, and I found a German and an English website. And there I have many, many, many martial arts videos, mean instructional videos, which are different than seminar videos, which are different than uh, than a lot videos. Okay. Um, because the instructional videos are usually have two or three cameras and edit all together and do dubbing afterwards and the live training or a lot or the seminars is more live training with one camera but you it's 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 just different tastes of it right so um so there i offer a, a lot <laughs> um of um, of contact different filipino martial arts but but not only that but also other martial arts that i um uh, that I filmed uh, on behind be, behind the camera and uh, and edited uh, everything. So uh, if you go um, uh, to www.abanico.de and then click on the English flag, you come to the English website. And uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm and if you have any questions, any just contact me from there on, and uh, and I'll be happy to to communicate with anybody of you. No worries. Yeah. Yeah, so guys, I just so. actually posted the uh, the link to um, GMD Thursa page. So if you uh, that's that's the video the video website, right? We still have the associational yeah. website, which is uh, www.modern-arnest.de, um, and also my personal website is on there as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it, I think we have covered quite a lot. I in your so interview too. yeah yeah i mean you laughed a lot which is good it's good actually and 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 uh i mean with this interview actually i i i learned quite a lot from you as well so and and i saw that we shared the same the same uh the same mindset when it comes to teaching when it comes to practicing but it's i'm um yeah i i I'm, 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 what's this? Uh, I'm at, I'm, I'm, I'm at all basically of how, what you did with modern Chinese in Germany. Your success Thank there you. tells Thank basically you of, yeah, tells basically of how sincere you are when in your approach in teaching and training and in sharing modern Chinese yeah. to your students and around the world. Yeah. So, and when, yeah. Whenever anybody is coming to Germany for holidays or for a work trip or so, contact me and we try to set you up. Dr. Kelly Warden just recently um, wrote to me, we have got somebody in Böbling and is working there. Uh, do you have any connection? We have a, a group 15 kilometers away from him so that I could refer him to, to, that, to that group. So um, either that or uh, in uh, first weekend of October, there is the camp with uh, Grandma Brian Zawilinski in, um, in Connecticut. I don't know if I can come due to COVID um, uh, um, uh, traveling re re um, regulations of the Americans. At the moment, I'm not allowed to enter the country. If that changes, yeah. I will be there. I would be happy to see uh, some people. But we had, uh, I had uh, the pleasure of meeting like Howard Van der Beck or Mark, uh, Mark Lynn or many of the other modern artists people mm -hmm. in the States because I do teach every now and then there. And it's always yeah. good fun um, to, yeah. to teach there and share whatever. Um, I have, and if they appreciate it, I'm. I feel honored. Yeah, yeah. If 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 I'm go, if we are going to Germany, I'm gonna let you know so I can visit you. Sure, anytime. You. And maybe anytime. Uh, maybe join one of your classes <laughs> as well. Sure. sure. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, if if you got if you got any 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 events uh, going on, let me know so I can like also like share it like i said i said through fma discussion and through the british council yeah. uh page as well so mm -hmm. 
help you. And if you're going this way, let me know as well. <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 in a few years ago, I did several seminars with Pat O'Malley. He was here a few times. I was there a few mm -hmm. times. We had a lot of fun uh, with the Rabbit Honest people there. It was great. Uh, yeah, maybe that comes back, you know, anytime. Yeah. Or if you have camps and want, you know, just let me know. I will see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will do. 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 Okay. So um, I think that wraps up our okay. interview now. Almost two hours, yeah. yeah. Well, two, two hours. Long. It was a very good. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very good two hours, though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's yeah. all right. It's all right. I think I think we focused quite quite well on 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 topics yeah. that that were relevant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, folks, I do hope that you had a great time uh, having uh, GM Dether for our FMA discussion interview. Um, so in behalf of all the moderators of FMA discussion, okay, we would like to thank you, GMD. Uh, for, thank you for uh, the honor of being on your program. Yeah. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Before, before we actually close, I forgot to ask one more question. Last one. Okay. okay. What, is, um, what is your message to the FMA community around the world? Yeah, we, we, it's, it's sort of like a standard question that we ask from the interviewees. <laughs> Train, be happy, have fun, and um, don't let the problems get you distracted. Just focus on what yeah, you like good. and try to leave the politics as much out of out of the business as possible and just enjoy what you do, share what you know, um, train, respect your partners, respect your peers and your instructors and uh, just have a good time. And uh, yeah, I think that's that is, enjoy your time. That is, yeah, that is that is a solid advice to for everybody. Yeah. And maybe we can have you one time again, another time, do some demos. If whatever you want, if you want to sure. yeah you see my dojo you see my, my studio behind me that's why i can do it <laughs> yeah we can arrange that we can arrange that yeah so we, we we let's we can have a chat and then set another date for for whatever for, for another interview with demos and everything okay yeah no worries okay yeah. right thank you very much gm dether again for coming thank and you thank you very much everybody for uh, tuning in with us uh, and I, we do hope that you uh, enjoyed the interview and learned as well, as much as I did from GM Dether. Yes, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for having me on the program. Big honor. Um, and it I enjoyed a lot. Honor. I hope to meet you in person sometime. Yes, uh, yes, definitely, definitely. Okay, okay, stay safe, GM. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, folks. So once again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all these fantastic questions uh, that you uh, posted uh, for for GMD to answer. Um, so we'll try to arrange another one with uh, GMD uh, for some for some demos. Okay, so it might be more of a theme type of interview, but. Um, um, before I say goodbye, uh, again, we, we still have the last, uh, last few days for the charity raffle that uh, I'm doing with FMA discussion. The raffle is going to be either this coming Saturday or Sunday. So there are still a few more spots or slots um, uh, available for the taking. So we appreciate your generosity. Okay. Uh, so once again, thank you very much, everybody. Guru Tom Pena signing off.